Hi everybody, Courtney here, and today I wanna to talk to you about 14 habits that I have developed that have enriched my life, and these have been over time, but when I retired from my day job or my career, which I'm not fully retired in the sense that I'm still holding on to my license and my certifications, I'm thinking about it as this year goes by, but when I left, I had an intention of what I wanted to do with my life. I still do work very, very part-time for our business, but for all intents and purposes, I do not go to a day job anymore. I just help my husband with our business. So I made a list of what my, to quote Ramit Sethi, I don't know if I ever say his name right, my rich life looked like before I left my job. And I will also say in my previous videos, I was watching some the other day, I was so stressed out. I did not realize how stressed out I was and how, I was just had so much angst over leaving my job and it's been the best thing I ever did. But I made a list and these are the habits that I do now to live intentionally in my life so I can enjoy my retirement. The first one is I knew that when I retired, I wanted to be continue with my whole food plant-based lifestyle, but to be even more conscientious about making meals from scratch. So now I use my time to make meals from scratch um, I cook almost every day. I always eat pretty much the same thing for breakfast. It's usually pretty simple. Um, and I also will make a meal every night or every day that we eat for two meals. So I have a cook once, eat twice kind of way of looking at it. Some meals are easy. Last night I heated up some leftover rice and beans and we have an avocado toast on the side with that. I made up some of my vegan cheese sauce and we're having mac and cheese tonight with some steamed uh, green beans or okra, I'm not sure. So I consciously try to eat healthy and focus my time on cooking meals from scratch. I'm sorry if you can hear my little heater in the background. I'm freezing, I can't get warm, so I've got that going. Number two is I consciously exercise at home. Uh, we go hiking, we live near a national park, we consciously go hiking. I do YouTube at home, I do meditations at home, yoga. I took a room and converted it when my son moved out to a workout room. We also do have a guest room in case anyone stays. But I will link a link below of the some of the videos that I work out with and the meditations that I use. Even though I've been meditating my whole adult life and longer, and I am a yoga therapist, I still like to use videos because I don't wanna think about it when I do it. So I have some great little short ones below from a place called Neuroscience Flow. Number three is conscious time with family. I make an effort every week to spend time with my family and with my friends when I can. Um, most of my friends do not live near me. They live further away with the exception of one. So it is kind of hard to fit it all in, especially because I have a very large family and my parents are aging and I try to see both my parents every week, my, mo my mom, I go work out with her on Wednesdays. I try to see my dad and my stepmother um, once a week. I go over and see them. And then my son, I try to see him once a week. And my daughter, when I can, I have another son and daughter and two bonus daughters that I make time to get to them when I can, but it usually involves travel. Um, but I consciously make sure that I'm spending time with people I love every single week. My husband and I have a date every Sunday, like clockwork, Sunday afternoon, I instituted this about a year ago because I got tired of him just working all the time. And I said, we have got to consciously work on our marriage because if we don't spend time together, it's too easy. I'm extremely introverted. He loves to be outside. We were living kind of parallel lives where if he was home, he was working outside on our farm. And me, I'm always cooking, cleaning, reading, working out. And it was just too easy for us to live separate lives. So we consciously, make a plan every Sunday for four hours and we try to watch TV or sit at the sun, watch the sunset or do something in the evenings together a couple of nights a week. The next thing is budget traveling. Um, so it depends on your budget, but I do credit card hack. I have a video. Um, I'll try to find it where I put it below. I do credit card hacking. I use credit card bonus points for travel. I get Airbnb points for being a super host. I use those, I get credits. Um, I give myself a budget. I won't go into too much of this because I talk about it in other videos, 
but I might say, this is my budget for an automobile. I don't just look at automobiles and see what they have. I say, I want to spend $100 a day on an automobile. I believe for our trip to Colorado for six nights, so for five nights, I think I paid $440 for a small SUV. I set a budget. I know how much I'm willing to spend on hotel and all of that. And that way I stay within my budget. The next thing is I prioritize my health. So when I left my job, there was a lot of things that converged and a lot of people end up retiring early, not by choice because they feel they get pushed out, they lose their job, they get laid off. But for me, what happened was um, I was having the long C word from, <laughs> from the virus and I was very sick and my doctor said, and I was very burned out and my doctor said, can you take some time off? And I started thinking about it and looking at it. And I was really stressed about my job. My job was going in a different direction than the direction, what I was hired for. What I was hired for started to change during the pandemic and they wanted me to do other things that I just didn't want to do. And being of a certain age, I wasn't wanting to restart teaching a, or have a yoga studio. And they basically wanted me to open a yoga studio in the clinic. Um, and I did not want to do that. So I took a year off with the intention of this is going to be the year of me getting healthy. And so what that has meant was going to all my doctor's appointments, all my specialists. Um, they found out I had a B12 deficiency, severe B12 deficiency. And I was taking my B12 because I am a vegan and that's important. But because of my autoimmune disease, I wasn't absorbing it. So I make sure to get my B12 shots every week, my allergy shots every week. Um, I've been getting all of my like mammogram, things like that. The things that you're supposed to do, I've been catching up on all of that, getting dental work, glasses, and just making sure that I'm taking care of my health, um, whether it's preventative care or seeing the doctor for the care that I need. So that is another thing is prioritizing my health. The sixth habit is I peri periodically go on low spins and spending freezes to give us a break to kind of recoup, get everything paid and just kind of get back down to basics. For me, spinning freezes and low spins or no spins, they kind of let you rest. It's kind of like that period after Christmas where you've done all your Christmas shopping and hopefully you don't have any credit card debt, but you just get to take a break from all the hubbub. <laughs> and for me, low spins are like that. They give me time to take a break from spending. It reduces decision fatigue and I love that. So I periodically do low spins and no spins. I'm probably going to be doing another one coming up. I've just got to figure out when because I have two grandbabies due in June and we have a lot of travel. So I'm not sure when that's going to be. I'm kind of thinking it might be August. So I will let y'all know. Number seven will be low maintenance beauty and clothes. So when I was traveling on the road, I didn't get fake nails. Occasionally I would um, have them do the, I don't remember what they're called, where they kind of build them on your nails. But I would get my nails done and my hair colored and all of that monthly. And it wasn't that I was super high maintenance. I didn't get like, I have long eyelashes. I didn't have to worry about that. I'd get my eyebrows done. But, you know, I was up on basically stage for all intents and purposes in front of a lot of people all the time, traveling, teaching, and it was important for me to feel good about myself and look good. And I was um, making enough money at the time to afford it, And but it was a hassle. And when the pandemic came along and I was only working at the clinic, I decided to quit coloring my hair. If you see older videos of me, you'll see my hair was very blonde. This is my natural color. It's kind of a dishwater blonde, a dark dishwater blonde. Um, I quit getting my eyebrows done professionally. I just plucked them myself. I do go and get a manicure and a pedicure, but it's only a couple of times a year for special occasions. Um, I am going to have a hair wash put on my hair, not a permanent, but just like something to brighten it because I'm going for the baby shower and my son's graduation. But I keep my beauty routine fairly low maintenance. I wash with soap and water and sometimes I'll use a night cream, but not very often only go through maybe one bottle a year um, of that. So that has really, um, like making that decision to age more naturally 
has helped me also reduce decision fatigue because it's saying, this is who I am. This is how I am. I'm not going to do Botox or surgery. Um, I'm not going to do fillers or anything like that. That has helped me accept that this is what I can do. I will allow myself to do hair color if I feel like I really want it um, to get my nails done occasionally, but I will not do fake nails or anything like that. So it's just kind of taking on an identity that reduces decision fatigue. And you do you, no judgment. You do what you feel comfortable with. Number eight is I keep an eye on my finances three times a week. Oh, now that I'm not working, this has been so helpful. I check in on our bills and how we're doing a couple of times a week by looking at our credit card. So we have everything with Chase, so I can go in and see all three credit cards, business and personal. And then we have all of our banking with one bank. And I do that because I like simplicity. And I constantly am looking, not constantly, about three times a week, where are we, how much have we spent? I know that we have about $500 is our base budget per week for groceries, for everything, whether it's travel, groceries, we need propane, I've gotta pay taxes, I've gotta pay medical bills. It's about 2,000 a month. The budget really is closer to 4,600, but there is investments that come out of that, there are basic bills that come out of that, and then out of that, I pay for everything, including the things most people put in their savings account. I just kind of cash flow those things, and but I make sure that that credit card doesn't get to a certain amount or we go on a spending freeze. So I will say to my husband, nope, we've reached our budget for this month, so you're gonna have to wait till such and such a date before you can spend again. And he knows that and I keep an eye on it so it's not a surprise. That helps us save so much money. I call it a reverse budget. It's kind of like, you know how much you have to spend after all the bills are paid. And when you've spent that much money, you stop spending. And you have to be conscious enough and disciplined enough to not do that all in a week, <laughs> but or you won't have any money for the rest of the month. Number nine is I consciously read more. I've been going to the library every month or every other month. I try to read one or two books a month. Sometimes they're nonfiction. I used to pretty much only read nonfiction, but I really enjoy nonfiction. I mean, uh, fiction. I have just really enjoyed it since I've retired. I allow myself that guilty pleasure, which I don't feel one ounce of guilt for. It's so nice to just get wrapped up in a story and a book, and it's really good for your brain. Uh, I saw a cartoon that showed a person watching TV, and everything was on the TV. I shot, saw the cartoon. The person was reading the book, and the picture was in the brain, um, and the eyes were on the book, and I feel like it's stimulating for your... Um, my brain is not working, but your synapses or your neurobiology, I don't know if that's the word I'm trying to say. I just think it's really good for your brain to do things that engage your brain and make you think more. And reading does that without too much stress. So I've really been enjoying reading books from the library. The next number 10 is I focus on my mental health. I go to a support group. I go to Al-Anon every Wednesday night. Um, I study and read up. I read my Al-Anon books. I read about mental health. I read about narcissistic abuse because I was in a narcissistic abusive relationship for 21 years. And it can be very scarring and leaves a lot of um, problems behind. So I very much have to deal with that. I see my therapist if I need to. Um, I, I don't, I used to go a lot when I first got divorced and when I was younger, but now it's kind of like a tune-up, I guess you would say. My my support group pretty much meets my needs, but I focus on making sure that I'm at those meetings every week unless I'm traveling. Number 11 is I organize and group my errands to save gas and time. So, for instance, I'm going to the town over on Thursday to get my car worked on. I'm trying to organize seeing a friend while I am there and running some errands while I am there that I can only do in that town. Today, I'm going to my hometown to take my son to the doctor. I will look over my list and see, is there anything I need to do while I am there? But I try to also organize the days where I'm off and I don't drive at all. My driving, I haven't figured out how much I'm saving in gas, but my driving has been cut almost in half since I quit working. And I know that's saving me a ton of gas and wear and tear on my car. Um, number 12 is, I 
Well, that was the same thing. I said those together. It was organize and group my errands to save gas and look at my calendar and save time by grouping things together. So yeah, that was 11 and 12. Number 13 was I walk away when things get bad. <laughs> this goes for relationships, food, TV, movies. I used to think I'm here, I've spent this much time with eating this meal, I paid for it. So I'm gonna finish it. I just throw it away now if I don't like it. Or I'm in this relationship and I need to make it work. Not to say that I don't work on a relationship, but I've learned if something seems fishy or off to set a boundary and say, I'm not gonna tolerate this and to back off. I've learned that when a TV, the other night we were watching the Whitney Houston story and I have a history with family members with uh, addiction and it started to really stress me out. And I told my husband, I just don't think I wanna watch any more of this. So I try to consume only content that does not cause me stress. And I no longer look at things like I've invested time or money into this, so I have to see it through. I used to be a person who refused to quit things, and now I have learned the power in what I call the quit list. It's okay sometimes to quit things when they're not providing you value or your mental health. Much rather to capture the time that you have going forward. Number 14, 14 is what we would call a slogan um, in Al-Anon, and it's called, don't just do something, sit there. You hear, have heard the um, little phrase, don't just sit there, do something. Well, it's the opposite of that when you're an extremely productive, codependent person and you're always trying to fix things and you feel like you can't rest and you need to be productive. I have learned that um, actually today, my husband and I got into a disagreement and I got my feelings hurt and he apologized and I just told him, I said, I cannot talk to you about this right now. I have to calm down. So, well, there's my mailman. Thank you so much for being here and have a wonderful day. Please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.